Okay, so today we are going to talk about buying or leasing a vehicle. This is the absolute last concept uh, that we have to cover in Math 30-3. So let's run through this. Let's see how, how we can get this done. All right, let's go. So uh, last concept, as I mentioned, we're looking at comparing buying a vehicle versus leasing a vehicle. Uh, we'll also look at the calculations that can be performed to determine the total payments for vehicles. Uh, buying a vehicle and leasing a vehicle is still going to require you to have monthly payments, uh, unless, of course, you buy a vehicle outright, which uh, not a lot of people do, but still, uh, we'll, we'll talk about these calculations. Here we go. All right, so buying or leasing a vehicle. When you look for a vehicle, you're often given the option to either buy or lease. So it's often up to you whether you want to buy the vehicle or lease the vehicle. Uh, leasing means you agree to use the vehicle for a specific period of time. It's pretty much just like a long-term rental. That's, that's all you're really worry about there. Uh, so if you choose to lease a vehicle, you sign an agreement where you agree on the lease term. So in other words, how long the lease is. So in other words, how long you're going to have that vehicle for. Uh, the monthly payments and the security deposit, the kilometer allowance, uh, which is the maximum distance you can drive the leased vehicle. They often put a limit on that so you don't overuse, overuse the vehicle, right? Uh, a delivery charge, which usually covers environmental fees and taxes. Uh, and then the option to purchase at the residual value at the end of the lease. The residual value just basically means, let's suppose you leased a new vehicle and you leased it for three years. Uh, the residual value is at the end of the three years. Uh, they assess what it's worth and uh, you have an option to purchase it for what's remaining on that vehicle. That's basically all there is to it. Anyway, uh, for most people, buying is the better choice, but leasing can be better for some people depending on their context. Uh, some of the advantages to leasing include lower monthly payments. Uh, so if you are someone who was like, right, I just need to minimize my monthly payments as much as possible. I don't care if I actually own the vehicle or not. Uh, maybe leasing might be an option for you. Uh, less worry about maintenance. Uh, where this comes in is the fact that leased vehicles are usually pretty much brand new. Uh, so there's less chance of any mechanical issues showing up with it. Uh, and also vehicles in their first couple of years of, uh, you know, after they've been made, uh, they're usually covered under warranty, right? So in other words, anything that does go wrong with the vehicle, usually it's under warranty, so you won't have to worry about paying for it anyway. Uh, you also not have to worry about selling it. Uh, it's a leased vehicle. As soon as your lease is up, uh, it goes back to the dealership. Uh, you can get a new car every few years. That's another thing that a lot of people who lease look forward to. If you're someone who is really putting a lot of importance on the fact that they have a new vehicle, uh, leasing might be a way of going about that. You just have to accept the fact that you have uh, monthly payments to be making all the time. Now, a major downside to leasing is that a lease contract is very hard to break early. If you want to leave your lease, usually it'll cost you a lot of money. So in other words, if you have a three-year lease and then a year into it, you're like, ooh, I don't want to, I don't want to lease this car anymore. I'm done. Uh, there's usually some very heavy, heavy penalties that uh, get put against you. Uh, for breaking your contract. All right, so we're gonna do a couple examples here. It's not necessarily about like determining whether or not you should buy or lease. Uh, it's just gonna talk about some of the math involved with this. Again, this, this whole chapter is kind of a, a mix and match thing of concepts, but anyway, here we go. Uh, suppose you wanted to purchase a used truck in Manitoba for 25,999. Uh, the taxes in Manitoba are 5% GST and 7% PST. PST is something we don't have in Alberta. It's provincial sales tax, uh, so it's just, done separately from the, the government sales tax on GST. Uh, so what is the total price of the truck? Uh, well, all we gotta do on this one is we gotta like pretty much add on the GST. So what you could do is you could take that 25,999 and then times it by 5% GST. So times by 0 0.05. That's gonna tell us how much GST we're paying on the truck. Then let's also take the 25,999 and we'll also times it by 0 0.07. That'll tell us the PST on the truck. Give me a second here, I'm just gonna calculate it. I'll round it to like the nearest cent just to make it exact. 25,999 times 5%. Oh, and that actually is to a, a cent, so 1,299.95. And then we'll do the 7%. Here we go, times by 0 0.07. That also is to the nearest cent, there you go. So 1819.93. Uh, so basically all you gotta do is you gotta take the GST and the PST, and it added on to the cost of the vehicle. So in other words, just add all three of those things up now. Uh, all right, so I'm adding them together here. One second, 25,999, good. All right, so the total cost of this vehicle should be $29,118.88, right? So even though this right here is the listed price of the, the used truck, you still have to pay GST and PST on it. Uh, so that brings the price up quite a substantial amount, like over $3,000 more. But you know, that's, that's taxes for you. 
So anyway, let's move on to part B. If you put a $10,000 down payment on the truck and then finance the rest at an annual interest rate of 5.50% compounded monthly for four years, find the actual total amount paid for the truck. Um, so here's the thing. We want to go back and we want to use this number again, $29,118.88. So let me write that down again, $29,118.88. That is how much money the truck is actually costing, but you are putting a $10,000 down payment on that. So that's bringing down the amount you need to borrow from the bank as being $19,118.88. So all I did was I took $10,000 away from this. So this is the amount of money that you're actually borrowing. If you remember now, when borrowing money, you have to actually take into consideration the compound interest formula. The compound interest formula is A equals P times 1 plus R over N uh, times, or sorry, to the power of N times T. Now, A is the actual amount of money you have to pay. P is the principal, so in other words, how much you're borrowing. R is the interest rate, or the annual interest rate, I should say, as a... Uh, as a decimal, not as a percentage, but as a decimal. N is the number of compounding periods per year, compounded monthly, so that'd be 12 in this case. Uh, and then N appears up in the exponent again, but then also T, T is the term of the loan in years. So here's what we've got to throw in here. We want to find the actual amount that we'd have to pay back uh, from this, uh, you know, this financing. So A is what we're looking for. Our principal, the amount we're borrowing is 19,118.88. Uh, we're going to times that by 1 plus R over N. R is the interest rate as a decimal, so we've got to turn that into a decimal, 0 0.0550. Divided by N is the number of compounding periods per year. It's compounded monthly, so divide that by 12. Uh, and then to the power of N, so 12, times by T, which is in years, so times by 4. Throw that in your calculator. You're going to have to, I'm going to have to apologize here. It's going to take me just a second to throw this in, but if you throw this in your calculator, we are going to get, this is going to be taking a little longer here, just give me a second. Uh, divide by 12 and then to the power of 12 times 4. All right, that seems reasonable. So what I got as a number is $23,811.62. That is the amount you'd have to pay back from the loan, but the actual total amount paid for the truck is including that $10,000 down payment. <clears throat> Remember, we're not paying any interest rates on that, so we just got to add that $10,000 back on. Uh, and that, of course, will give us, I'll just do it over here, $33,811.62. Whew, all right, so there you go. So again, notice how when you, uh, when you finance a vehicle, the, the overall price of the vehicle goes up quite considerably right there, right? So uh, it is important to, to be mindful of that as to how much you're actually paying for the vehicle. So with financing it, it's actually costing you over $4,000 more uh, in the long run to finance that vehicle. Anyway, we're moving on. Next example, I think this is actually our last example here. Kyle is leasing a vehicle. There's a $4,000 down payment, a $1,000 security deposit, a delivery fee of $500, and then a monthly payment of $550 for three years. So that's with leasing. Again, there's no other calculations to do. They've already found it for you. That's your lease payments. So how much will you have to pay in the first month? This is a bit of a weird one. Well, remember, you gotta think of your up upfront costs, right? So your upfront costs here are gonna be your down payments, 4,000 bucks, and your security deposit. Now, ideally, you get your security deposit back at the end of it, but it's still an upfront cost. Uh, the delivery fee of 500 is also an up, upfront cost. Uh, and then you also have to make your first monthly payment of 550 bucks. So the amount he has to pay in the first month is that full 4,000 plus 1,000, plus 500, and then plus the monthly rate of 550. Uh, I think I can do this in my head here. That's 5,000 plus this is, uh, it'd be $6,050, or sorry, $6,050. There you go, $6,050. That's what you'd have to pay in the first month. But again, that's kind of um, misleading because of course most of that is the down payment uh, as well as the security deposit, the delivery fee, and of course your first monthly payment is tacked on there as well. All right, so the last one here, what will his total cost be if he loses half the security deposit due to damage. Okay, so here's, here's what we're gonna do about this one. I'm gonna break down what we did in this first part into a few other things. This is what we paid in the first month, but it's including our first monthly payment. You're making monthly payments of $550 for three years. Three years is three times 12, which is 36 months. So you're gonna have 36 payments of $550. This $6,050 that we found right here, 
6,050. That's including one of those monthly payments. So really we can tone down our monthly payments now to just 35 monthly payments. So I'm gonna go plus in brackets, 35 more monthly payments of uh, $550. But then there's gonna be one other thing that's gonna happen here. If you add these together, that's what he's paying in total. But at the end of this, he's getting part of his security deposit back. He's only losing half of it. So that means also he's getting half of his security deposit back. So even though this is what he paid in the first month, and then this is what he's paying in all the other months after, at the end, he's getting half of his security deposit back. So at the end, we can subtract 500 off of what he's paying. All right, let's throw this all in. 6,050 plus in brackets, 35 times 550, uh, and then minus 500 from that. And you are getting a nice, really nice number actually. That's uh, $24,800. And that's from just leasing a vehicle. That's just having the vehicle for three years. That's what it's costing you. So again, it's all a matter of perspective as to whether or not it's even worth leasing a vehicle, uh, because sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, if it's a more luxury vehicle, I guess that's a, a decent price. You know, if the vehicle was something that costs like sixty or $70,000 or more, maybe you'd prefer going this route. Um, but again, it all depends on, uh, on uh, what your priorities are, I suppose. All right, that's it. We're done. Math 30-3, that was it for uh, content. You're going to find in these practice questions, there's a lot of different scenarios. There were so many scenarios that there's not really any possibility for me to go uh, cover all of them without literally doing every single question. Just be mindful of what questions are asking you and think critically uh, about uh, what you're supposed to be calculating, okay? Anyway, if you have any questions with anything, please let me know. You can send me an email uh, or whatever you need, uh, and I will be sure to help you. Best of luck.